discuss the TICO's trial, the uh, trial evaluating cardiovascular outcomes with cetaglitin in patients with type 2 diabetes. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure for me to uh, share with you the results of the uh, heart failure outcomes uh, associated with the use of citagliptin in the TICOS trial. My uh, declarations and disclosures are uh, depicted here and are available on our VIGOR website uh, as indicated. I would remind you that TICOS was a large pragmatic trial uh, which assessed the impact of uh, the DPP-4 inhibitor citagliptin versus placebo on cardiovascular events. And uh, Dr. Lewis's presentation on Elixir uh, provides uh, some context for this. Uh, in this uh, instance, we added it to usual diabetes care. We actually intended to minimize the difference in glycemia between the two groups. And uh, we uh, randomized patients with established cardiovascular disease, followed them up for a meeting of three years, and uh, ours was an academically-led uh, trial in collaboration with industry. The primary endpoint was to demonstrate non-inferiority as it relates to the composite of cardiovascular death, non-fatal MI, non-fatal stroke, or hospitalization for unstable angina. And the interest, uh, uh, particularly for this presentation, relates to the pre-specified secondary endpoint of uh, hospitalization for heart failure and outcomes related to that. The initial trial uh, showed that the placebo event rate on the primary was here, citagliptin was here. As you can see, they were virtually identical, is blown up here, and the hazard ratio uh, close to unity. Some fast facts and context for uh, diabetes and heart failure are depicted here. We know it's associated with increase in heart failure, similar actually to the frequency of MI and stroke. Uh, incident, the incidence increases with age, but actually the relative risk is actually higher in younger patients. And in patients with atherosclerosis and type 2 diabetes, we know that hospitalization for heart failure has increased by at least uh, 30 percent. The mortality is double that uh, seen in non-diabetics, and as Dr. Bell has referenced in the literature, diabetes and heart failure is frequent, forgotten, and often fatal. Moreover, there are a variety of anti-diabetic therapies that have been associated uh, with uh, an increased incidence in heart failure, and most particularly in relationship to this presentation, some of the uh, DPP-4 uh, inhibitors, and I'll come back to that. So uh, we uh, uh, recognize then that the two trials where this risk uh, has been previously documented is the saver timmy 53 uh, trial of saxagliptin and the examined trial of alagliptin. And so in the current analysis and uh, with a pre-specified plan, we wanted to look uh, at heart failure hospitalization uh, in the overall population and in some key relevant uh, subgroups. Uh, here you see the baseline characteristics of the 457 patients who uh, on the left uh, had uh, heart failure. Uh, and you can see that, uh, as I noted in the bottom and highlighted, that uh, there was a higher incidence of prior infarction and prior heart failure, not surprisingly. Uh, the anti-hyperglycemic uh, uh, therapies are depicted here and other cardiovascular medicines. These patients were well treated uh, with uh, evidence-based medicines to uh, affect uh, their cardiovascular outcomes and uh, fairly comparable. The time to first hospitalization for heart failure uh, in the placebo group is depicted here and in the citagliptin here and again virtually superimposable. Uh, as it relates to uh, the hospitalization for heart failure and the hazard ratio uh, essentially identical. A variety of uh, pre-specified subgroups are noted here, and I've highlighted those with patients with prior heart failure who are at particular risk then to subsequent heart failure and the morbidity and mortality associated with it. And again, uh, there was no difference, and the p-values for interaction of these variety of subgroups are listed uh, along the uh, right margin of the slide, and there's no uh, significant uh, interaction uh, based on any of these characteristics. Uh, what about heart failure-related outcomes in all comers then? We see that the hospitalization for heart failure was a little over 3 percent and uh, adjusted for uh, baseline heart failure and a variety of factors that uh, are known to be prognostically relevant and are depicted on the bottom of this slide. Uh, again, no difference in the uh, outcomes. Uh, 
And uh, then the composite, the important composite of heart failure, hospitalization, and death, since we know that death occurs more frequently in these patients, depicted here, 7.3, 7.2%. Again, adjustments uh, and for all-cause mortality uh, are very similar indeed. Uh, here are uh, the uh, patients then uh, who uh, uh, had recurrent uh, heart failure, and you can see that uh, with two or three events of heart failure, again, the numbers are very similar, and the mortality, uh, strikingly, at one year was uh, 22%, 23%, and all-cause mortality, uh, uh, 28 29%. So again, uh, a uh, devastating complication, but similar uh, in both uh, treatment groups. Uh, here we see uh, the patients with prior heart failure, uh, and uh, again, uh, identical uh, hospitalization rates, uh, mortality rates, uh, and uh, uh, the composite of cardiovascular death, heart failure, and all-cause mortality, again, uh, very similar. Importantly, uh, as I've depicted uh, in my introduction, both SAVER and EXAMINE, in fact, a meta-analysis of these two published in Lancet uh, uh, Diabetes, uh, several months ago suggested uh, an excess uh, in the uh, uh, hospitalization for heart failure, and we've superimposed the TCOS data here on the bottom, and then the composite of uh, the three trials, and you can see that uh, uh, now uh, the uh, uh, hazard ratio does not, uh, it, it overlaps one, suggesting uh, that, uh, in fact, uh, when one adds the TCOS population of over 14,000 patients to these other two uh, uh, DPP-4 inhibitors, uh, there is no uh, significant excess. However, the heterogeneity between these trials is of modest proportion, and so uh, one uh, undertakes uh, the, this result with some caution. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, we found no increase uh, in the risk of heart failure or uh, the outcomes related uh, to that uh, problem uh, after citagliptin therapy. Why, might you ask, then, are the differences uh, that we found versus the other two trials that I've shown you, uh, perhaps in relationship to the patients that were enrolled, uh, their background care, uh, the variation in surveillance, acquisition of the data, and definition of heart failure, uh, whether there are, intrinsic, there are intrinsic pharmacologic differences and whether these uh, might play out uh, and produce a different outcome, uh, I think is a matter of speculation, and we cannot, of course, exclude the play of chance. Uh, but I think uh, we can safely conclude that citagliptin uh, can be used in patients with type 2 diabetes without the concern that's been raised for worsening heart failure. Thank you for your attention. Questions for Dr. Armstrong? Hello, uh, John Gardner with, with EP Vantage over, here, over, on the, uh, over to your left. Um, we've recently seen the uh, results of the EMPA reg outcome, or at least top line data from that, suggesting of a cardiovascular benefit for empagliflozin. If the results turn out to be as robust as has been suggested so far, does that merit having a look at uh, diabetes care guidelines? I would uh, most affirmatively suggest yes. Uh, and uh, we, all of us look forward to seeing whether the, uh, the data uh, that uh, has been suggested in the press release is, uh, is validated in a proper scientific peer-reviewed forum. So I think the answer uh, is uh, it will deserve very careful consideration and might impact. Other questions? All right. Thank you very much.